Anyone who has watched my channel for a while will know I don't particularly like talking about the cash for ships aspect of Star Citizen. You absolutely only need a starter pack to get in and enjoy the game, and everything will be available to buy for credits once you're there. However, I talk to a lot of people who are just getting into the game, and I know that feeling when you see a ship you love and you want it in your hangar, after every wipe and in the live version. And frankly, if I can help you save some money on that purchase by deciphering some of the mysticism that is CCUs, LTI tokens, war bond, etc, etc, then why wouldn't I? If I've already lost you in the acronyms, then fear not, we're going to go through it all in detail. So grab a cup of tea while I roll the intro, and then let's get into it. Hello and welcome back or welcome to the channel. I'm Loud Guns and today we're going to be doing a ship buying guide that I hope will serve you in good stead if you're looking to buy anything up from a base game package. I particularly wanted to get this out now because we've got one of the big annual sales coming up in about two weeks, the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. First things first, I said it once already but I'm going to say it again because it's important. If you are new, all you need to play Star Citizen is a base game package with an Aurora or a Mustang Alpha. This sets you back about $45 plus taxes, and usually around the events like IAE, you'll see some of these packs at small discounts. There are also regular free fly events, the next one of those starts on November the 18th, where all you need to try the game out is an account, so give it a go before parting with any of your hard earned money. When you create an account, just make sure you use a referral code since it gets you a bit of extra starter cash to start your journey out with. If you've got a mate who plays already, ask them for theirs, but if not, mine's up on screen now. Star City can be a bit of a slippery slope, particularly if your response to the marshmallow test is not optimal. And the CIG marketing department is rather skilled at creating a bit of a false sense of urgency in my opinion. So start slow and basically ignore the bigger ships until you're sure the game's for you. Also think a bit about the crew requirements of larger, more expensive ships before you buy them. I tell everyone who joins our Discord or our org that I don't really care what ships people have. I care about the people I'm going to be flying with. All org leaders I've met who are worth their salt think this way, so if you come across one who's telling you that you need to buy a certain ship, just consider that a bit of a red flag. To make this video digestible, I'm going to split it up into two core parts, and I'm not going to rush. First we're going to go through some of the terminology and core principles, helping people to understand annual ship sales and ship availability, vehicle insurance and LTI, CCUs, war bond, melting, buybacks and whole limited vehicles. Then after this section we're going to go on to talking about CCU chaining, which is the part about how to save money on ships. I want this guide to be as comprehensive as I can make it because I know sometimes people are a bit afraid to ask what they perceive to be stupid questions, but I fully understand that some of you might know everything that's in this first section, and you just want the CCU chaining guide, so rest assured that I won't be offended if you just use the chapter markers to skip straight ahead to the second half. So you might have noticed if you've consulted a list of all of the ships in SC, that quite a lot of them are not available to buy in the pledge store. Most ships are only on sale at certain times, but all of them will be regularly on sale. The two big sales every year are the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, or IAE. This comes in November, and then in May we have Invictus Launch Week, usually just called Invictus. IAE includes practically everything, all ships from all manufacturers. But Invictus is a bit more restrictive. In law, it's a UE Navy oriented event. So it includes all ships with a military application. Think every combat ship, but also things like the MISC Starfarer or the Crusader Hercules which are used for military logistics. Both of these events have an in-game element with expo halls at one of Stanton's major LZs showing off the ships. Players can rent everything in the shows for the princely sum of zero credits, so it's a great chance to see and try out all kinds of ships, although you'll be capped to the stock loadouts for them. 
For law reasons, some manufacturers are excluded. So Drake, for example, is shunned by the UEE military given its questionable business practices. So they don't feature as part of Invictus itself. But as a finger raised firmly at the establishment, Drake always hold their own expo at the same time. There are also a number of alien ships in games, so shortly after Invictus we have Alien Week, if weird and wonderful is more your speed. These in-game events are accompanied by a major sale on the RSI website. In line with the calendar of the expo hall, you'll find all the ships from that manufacturer on sale for those days. Each day there will be a warp on CCU for one of the company's ships, but a bit more on that later. Very important to note, because the immediacy of these events can cause some trigger-happy spending. In previous years, on the last days of these events, all of the ships and CCUs have been made available, so you shouldn't need to rush to pick up something. The important thing to take from all this is that for the foreseeable future, i.e. while the game is using its current funding model with ship sales, there won't be a last chance as such to pick up a ship. It's going to be on sale at least once or twice the next year and the year after that and so on, and I'd imagine CIG are going to shout from the rooftops when they're going to end ship sales. I promise I'm not going to say CCU again until I get on to explaining what one is but we're going to take a quick detour here to talk about vehicle insurance. Key point, none of this matters now. Right now, in-game, all ships have effectively unlimited insurance. You blow up your ship because you just really love asteroids and want to be closer to them. You wake up from a terrible dream, you claim the ship at a terminal. And after an amount of time, it's delivered to you complete with any upgraded components. If you're willing to part with a relatively small amount of credits, you can expedite it and get your replacement ship delivered in a shorter amount of time. But eventually this is going to change, so in the live game ships will need an insurance policy to make this effectively happen. Insurance will be something you can take out for in-game currency, and probably the old EVE adage, don't fly if you can't rebuy, will hold true. Ships pledged for with hard currency though come with an insurance element freeing you up to not worry about making creds to insure your ship in-game, certainly while you get your feet in the door. An absolute base is you'll get 6 months insurance. This is in real time with the clock only ticking from the moment the game goes live. At the regular ship sales, most ships are sold with a massively increased 10 year insurance. And finally some ships are sold with the holy grail for JPEG connoisseurs, lifetime insurance or LTI. Ships are generally sold with LTI during their first instance on sale, either as a concept or a straight to flyable model. You will always get LTI on a ship valued at more than $1000 if you choose to go that high up though. So first up, lifetime insurance is probably given way too much credit over the 10 year insurance that major ship sales come with. My view is that insurance probably doesn't matter anywhere near as much as people make out, because if within even 6 months of playing the game you can't afford insurance premiums on your ships, you're probably doing something wrong. Secondly, it's unlikely that any ship you part real world money for will ever be completely taken away from you if destroyed while uninsured. I am not a lawyer, but I'm pretty sure doing something like that would open up a whole can of consumer rights based worms. The way I could see it working is cash pledged ships being returned to your hangar, but maybe taking a relatively long time to get there if they are destroyed while uninsured. While we're here we can also tick off another little piece of jargon, the oft discussed LTI token. So simply put, an LTI token is a new small vehicle or ship. Because it's new as either a concept or a straight to flyable, it gets lifetime insurance. A great recent example is the Greycat STV, or Steve, which released in October with CitizenCon. You could get this for $35 of new cash. And people buy these not because they want an army of Steves, but to form the base to upgrade off. We're going to cover all this in the chaining section, but I just wanted to cover the jargon while it tied in with insurance. CIG know what they're doing, so during most sales they will find a way to release a small vehicle like this, knowing that we, the JPEG enthusiasts, will gladly stock up on 1, 2 or 7. Okay, I skirted around saying CCU again there, so it's finally time to cover off what exactly they are. A CCU or cross chassis upgrade is a way to upgrade one vehicle to another. If you navigate to your hangar on the RSI website and click this button here marked ship upgrades, you'll be able to see all of the ships currently available on the right hand side, and by default all of the ships that are in your hangar on the left. 
If you select a ship to upgrade to, you can hit buy, and after paying the difference in the value between the two ships you've got selected, you'll get a CCU. A key thing to wrap your head around here is that a CCU is a standalone pledge in its own right. The upgrade isn't instantly applied to the ship you selected, instead the CCU goes into your hangar. If you want to actually apply it, you can click here and then select the vehicle you want to apply it to. Once you do that, you'll have the upgraded ship in your hangar, both on the site and in-game after you relog. Another thing to understand, some people may already have hit pause to correct me on this in the comments, is that you do not have to own the ship you are upgrading from in order to buy a CCU. This was one which back in the day when I got told it just blew my mind a little bit. Back in the ship upgrade menu, if I change this switch here, I can select all ships as opposed to just those that I personally own. And why is this important? Well, as ships progress through the development cycle from concept to white box to grey box to flyable, they tend to increase in price. The Redeemer, for example, was released as a concept at $250, and then it went up to $325 as it approached release in 2021. Now, back at the time it concepted, I might not have had the cash available to buy it. I might have been a bit unsure about it, maybe I'd like it, maybe not. But whatever the reason, I might have wanted to lock in the price of the Redeemer at the current level. So for the sake of argument, I could buy the CCU from an RSI Constellation Andromeda, which was fully released and therefore unlikely to increase in price. And this would have set me back $10, just the difference between the $240 Connie and the $250 Redeemer. Fast forward in time, and the Redeemer comes out. I've followed the development and I absolutely love it. And thanks to a timely win in the World Cup sweepstake, I'm flush with cash, so the money's no issue. All I have to do now is buy a Connie Andromeda for $240, apply my CCU to it, and voila. I have a Redeemer at the original price of $250, despite it having moved up in value to $325. Don't worry, we can do a lot better than this when, I, when it comes to me saying we could save money. I just want to illustrate how you could use this to lock in the price of a ship you think you might want for a smaller outlay of capital while you wait. It's worth keeping in mind that CCUs only go upwards, they're cross-chassis upgrades, not cross-chassis downgrades. So keep in mind that you always need to aim for a ship above if you want to move on to something else via a CCU. And this is often where the slippery slope of JPEG addiction begins. It can sometimes be a bit tricky to see which ships are what prices, so I just want to shower a bit of attention on a new tool my friend Star Destroyer has incorporated into his SEO tools website. This shows all of the ship prices and he has data mined the price history so you can see what price ships originally sold for and when they increased in price. Conveniently, he's also got all the in-game prices in there too. Ideally, you want to look for the next cheapest ship down to CCU from, since this means you can outlay the minimum capital. Just be a bit careful about going from concept to concept, because there's always a danger that the one that you're CCUing up from could increase in value more than the one you're going to, and that could just backfire on you a little bit. The safest approach is always going from a ship that's already complete and in-game, since these are the ones which are least likely to change in price. And this talk of CCUs brings us on nicely to the term Warbond. Very simply, whenever you see Warbond, it means that you can only buy it with fresh, lovely money. You can't buy anything marked Warbond with store credit. However, the trade-off is that Warbond typically conveys a discount to the listed price of an item. You'll typically get Warbond vehicles, where the entire thing needs to be brought with new cash, and this usually applies to new concepts. But you'll also get Warbond CCUs, particularly around the sales. Normal CCUs, where there is no discount involved, can be purchased with either cash or credit, but Warbond CCUs or upgrades are cash only. The advantage here is you can apply some of the chicanery we covered just to search out a ship that is closest to the discounted price of the target ship to minimise the amount of hard currency you're putting in. For instance, here I have a Warbond CCU from a Prospector to a Sabre, which I bought for $5 but the gap between the two ships at $15 indicates on this that I saved 10 bucks. Right now I'm just trying to establish exactly what all these terms mean, but Warbond CCUs are going to come in really handy when we're looking at CCU chains later. So keep in mind that as mentioned earlier, there's usually one Warbond CCU per manufacturer displaying each day at the IAE and Invictus sales. 
We don't know what these will be until the day, although there are entire Discord chats devoted to people trying to crystal ball these things. One pretty sure thing is that all of the ships that came in the top four of the best in show competition will be available as Warbond CCUs at IAE. So for the 2952 event later this month, that will probably be the Carrick, Pisces, MSR and Scorpius. So I mentioned store credit as a way to buy stuff, so it probably merits taking a quick look at how you might end up with some. Melting basically just describes getting a store credit refund on a ship you've pledged for. In your hangar where you see any items that you own, you can click the arrow at the side to expand the selection, and you'll then see two options, to exchange and gift. Gifting is for if you're feeling particularly generous, just in case anyone's lining me up a Christmas present, but the exchange button is how you melt an item. When you click on this button, you'll open up this window informing you that you can remove the pledge in exchange for the value you paid as store credit. Important things to pull out here. Number one, the value you paid, not the value the ship is now. So if you did happen to get yourself a very cheap concept ship, you'll only ever get back exactly what you put in. Taking that redeemer from earlier as an example, if you had paid $250 and you melted it, even if you melted it after it went up to $325, you would only ever get $250 out. So think about this quite carefully before hitting the melt button. There's a reason you have to acknowledge two tick boxes and re-enter your password to be sure. Secondly, you might notice that the store credit amount is lower than what you paid on your debit card. I live in the UK, so all of the prices I see for stuff on the RSI website have 20% VAT added on. Taking this Aegis Gladius for instance, my price is $108, the ship's only worth $90, but then His Majesty's government take $18 on top of that. Considering the pain I was in last Sunday when I was going, going through a stream and the excellent treatment and free med pens that I got from my doctor on Monday, I am not complaining about this. However, if I add this to my cart, you'll notice this bit over here where it says store credits. And if I click add next to this, I can enter the amount up to $90. Adding the full amount takes the amount due down to zero. I already paid the tax once, so I don't have to pay it again. Right, I'm not going to actually go any further because I don't actually want a Gladius, and I also don't care for doxing myself. I like the fact that we have a different word, melting, and don't use the term refund. I can melt and get store credits, allowing me to shift around my choice of ships, but I can't get a card currency back out. I made a pledge, so that money is already CIGs. It's also important to note that if you've applied CCUs to a ship that you then want to melt, they're also gone. You'll get the money you paid for them back as store credit, but you can't melt the underlying ship and hive off the CCU for reuse. They're inseparable once you've put them together. But what if, despite the multiple layers of are you sure, you melt something and then regret it an instant later? In your hangar over on the left hand side here you'll find buyback pledges. As you can see, I buy rather a lot of junk for use in videos and then I melt it. You get one option to buy back a pledge every three months. Two if you've moved past the thousand dollar spend mark and your concierge, you know, don't judge me. Tokens refresh in January, April, July and October, every three months. They don't stack up, so you can't save them up to do a lot of buybacks at once. The key thing here is that you can use store credit to buy back any pledge. So if you made a mistake and just want to undo it, that should be okay. But buybacks are a bit of a moving feast. You know, CRG made some changes a few months ago, removing the ability to buy melted CCUs back at the price you bought them for. This was directly to counter a practice where people would buy cheap CCUs, then instantly melt them and buy more. This allowed people to stock up their buybacks with CCUs waiting for ships to go up in price without actually having any skin in the game. If you're at all unsure as to whether you'll be able to buy something back at the same price, check out the RSI site for the most up-to-date information, or raise the support check its ticket and just ask someone first. Just keep in mind that things might change at the drop of a hat. The only way to be sure that you have a ship or a CCU at a certain price is to have it in your hangar, not in your buybacks. The melting system is meant to be permanent, and the buyback system is meant to be just a little bit of a lifeline in case you make a mistake. So if you're looking for loopholes to exploit in the system, then just be aware that you might get burned if those loopholes are shut at a moment's notice. Finally for our walkthrough of the jargon, we've got hull limited vehicles. 
These are ships which are only released in limited quantities during the sales. The current list of whole limited vehicles includes the Javelin, the Idris of all its MKMP varieties, the Kraken and Kraken Privateer, Pioneer, 890 Jump, Hull E, Constellation Phoenix, and a couple of the Vandal ships, the Scythe and the Glaive. Most of these ships are towards the top end of what can be pledged for, however some like the Connie Phoenix or the Vandal ones are just meant to be rare. You cannot CC you up to a whole limited ship. You have to win one of the F5 wars hitting refresh on the page when they are made available, and part with either cash or credit to buy one outright. Just keep this in mind if you're crazy enough to have a javelin on your shopping list this IAE. On top of these, it's just worth noting that there are a couple of super rare ships like the Sabre Raven and the Mustang Omega that were only ever available as promos. You can't buy them, but for the most part they're purely cosmetic versions of other ships that you can buy. Congratulations, you made it through the jargon, or you just skipped all the jargon and arrived here via the chapter markers. Either way, it's time to talk about CCU chaining. CCU chains are a way to get ships cheaper than the list price. They take a bit of working out and have the best results when you're really patient, but it can pay off in the form of some quite impressive savings. Let's take a relatively big ship, not one of the biggest because we can't look at anything hull limited, doesn't work for those, but big enough that we have some room to work within. I've always liked the RSI Perseus, sleek silhouette, massive guns, heavy armour, I like everything about this ship apart from the price tag of $675. To me this would actually be $810 due to the aforementioned free healthcare, but to keep this as simple as it can be, let's imagine I've taken to the high seas on board my yacht and I'm living a tax-free existence. So, IAE is coming up, I know when RSI day is, and because everything's on sale I know that the Perseus is going to be available. Option 1, I've got $675 in the bank and I say shut up and take my money. The ship's mine, it lives in my hangar, and I go to sleep knowing that my JPEG is safe. I got 10 year insurance on it because it was during a big sale, and I go to bed and dream happy dreams of blowing stuff up. But if I wanted to be smarter about it, I could start building myself a CCU chain. The first thing I'm going to want is an LTI token. Hello Steve. The Greycat STV set me back $35 and comes with LTI since I got it in a concept sale. As a little bonus, it has a saving of $5 built into it because it was a war bond concept, so its standalone value is actually $40. During the sales, keep an eye out for any war bond CCUs, since these upgrades are the ones that provide discounts. The goal of a good CCU chain is to fill this middle zone between the LTI token and the target ship with as many war bond CCUs as possible, to stack as many discounts as we can. I'm just going to slip one of mine in so that we can illustrate how it works. Here I have a Starfarer Gemini to Valkyrie Warbond CCU that I bought during Invictus earlier this year. If I click on exchange I can see that it's got a melt value of $10, that's the same as what I paid for it. But if I check the difference in price between the two ships we can see that the Starfarer Gemini at $340 is $35 cheaper than the Valk at $375. I start with my Steve, I paid $35 but it's worth $40. I go up to a Starfarer Gemini by buying an STV to Gemini CCU for $300. Then I can apply my $10 Gemini to Valkyrie CCU getting me to a value of $375. And then I can buy a Valkyrie to Perseus CCU for the remaining $300. I now have my Perseus for $645 spent incorporating the $5 saving on the Steve and that $25 saving from the Warbond CCU I added. So this is just a really simple CCU chain, about as simple as they come effectively. As an added bonus, this Perseus would have LTI, so as you CCU up you accumulate all the underlying bonuses that go with each pledge. And when you've got multiple insurances like this, it just picks the best one, so in this case we get the LTI from the STV. I get that a $30 saving on a $675 ship is not that impressive, but the key here is that this was just as simple as CCU chains can be, and in order to save the big bucks you just need to add more and more links to the chain. Incorporate more Warbond CCUs to get more savings. I've got another $10 Warbond CCU here, this time from a Vulcan to a Terrapin, and the gap between these two is $20, so we've got another $10 of savings. 
So now our chain goes Grey Cat STV, saving 5 bucks, Steve to Vulcan, Vulcan to Terrapin, saving $10, Terrapin to Gemini, Gemini to Valkyrie, saving $25, Valkyrie to Perseus. Now our LTI Perseus cost us $635, saving 40 Some people, me, enjoy spreadsheets more than is generally considered healthy, and will happily do all of the legwork themselves to piece together the puzzle of what CCUs they own and where they could potentially make more savings. But if you're a little more normal than that, you can use a tool called the CCU Game App. You can import your hanger from the RSI page and the CCU Game will give you loads of detail about everything you're holding. The app can also help you to build more efficient chains. So I'm just going to pretend I don't have a spreadsheet that I built for the fun of it, and let's see what the cheapest theoretical Perseus I could get this IAE is. First I'll click on Create Chain. I'm going to leave the optimization target as high as savings. You can also use the lowest amount of new money option to limit the amount of cash you add and prioritize using as much of your store credit as possible. I'm also going to leave the default options in place here. I'm not too worried about excluding save chains since I don't have any, but this can be really useful if you're building more than one chain. You don't want to factor a single CCU into two chains. When it comes to source ship, I'm going to select from my hangar and pick one of my STVs to keep it the same as what we're working to already. And for target ship, I'll select the Perseus. Then we'll click create chain. The message here comes up because right now the Perseus isn't on sale, but we'll just select simulate availability. And there we go. If I were to throw all of these various Warbond CCUs that I've acquired at various sales behind this purchase, I count 12 of the things, I could get myself a Perseus with LTI for $400, saving $275 or 41% versus the list price. A really huge thing to remember that can be surprisingly easy to forget if you're looking at this thinking $275 is a lot of money to save, then keep in mind that that means that $400 is a lot of money to spend. I don't want to patronise anyone, but I've seen a lot of folks zoom in on what they're saving and forget what they're spending, so I'd kick myself if I didn't call this out right now. I didn't build this cache of CCUs up over the course of a single sale, I've been hoarding these things for the last two years or so. And this is what I meant earlier about patience being a key ingredient of good CCU chains. The more sales you wait through, the more potential savings you can make through more Warbond CCUs. So if you're in no rush, my advice would be to make sure you've got an LTI token, and make sure you've got a CCU from the next cheapest thing down that's not likely to go anywhere in terms of price, up to your preferred target ship. Leaning on our Perseus example again, I could pick up a CCU from the Carrick to the Perseus for $75. And that just means that any time I want to complete the chain, I can lock in that $675 price on the Perseus. If it gets developed and it goes up in value, it's not going to creep up on me. The trade-off to this is that you've got nothing in your hangar actually filled apart from the Steve. But hey, Steves are epic, so that's not that bad. I've been putting off making this video for a long time, partly because I knew it was going to be a load of work to get it right, but mostly because I struggle a bit with the whole cash pledging side of SC. My personal belief is that it's your money. Maybe you earned it, maybe it's your pocket money, or maybe you found a bag of non-sequential $20 bills in the woods and are not inclined to ask that many questions. However you got it, it's yours, and I don't like telling people how they should or shouldn't use it. I also really don't like giving the impression that you need to get into buying bigger ships to enjoy SC, because I simply don't think that's true. But the way I've come to see this is a little bit different, I guess. You know, when I was back at university, a mate of mine got into his head that he was going to learn the accordion. I had my reservations about this, I didn't personally think he'd stick to it, and just in case you don't know, accordions are bloody loud. Regardless of my reservations, his mind was made up. So if he'd been wandering off to the music shop down the road to buy his accordion for £675, when I knew that the music shop in the next town over had exactly the same one on sale for £400, if I didn't tell him about that, I'd be a bad friend. Spoiler alert, by the way, his accordion's now my accordion because no, he did not stick with it. Even with a vid as long as this one, there's a lot of info to absorb when it comes to all the jargon and how CCU chains work, so don't be afraid of asking for a bit of help. 
feel free to pop into our Discord, where amongst a lot of other stuff we've got a channel dedicated to this aspect, where you can ask for help from some more experienced ship addicts. If you enjoyed the video or it helped you out, please consider helping me out and dropping a like and sharing it with any friends you think it might be useful for, and hit subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up with new videos. Just in case, if I did happen to save you an excessive amount of money ahead of IAE or any future sale, I guess now's as good a time as any to mention that I have a Patreon. Bit cheeky, but hey ho. And with all that said, thank you very much for watching all the way to the end, and I look forward to seeing you next time.